Well, now let's have a little sidebar on what I've been talking about with a volume index. What I've been saying, you can think of it as just quantity. Well, oftentimes that's, you know, works well enough if you're thinking about things like the number of plates that are coming out uh, to a table at a restaurant, um, or the number of cars that are rolling off. And that all makes sense to think of that as a kind of quantity measure. But what it hides is there's a little bit of heterogeneity that's hiding about there. Not every plate that goes out is going to have the same dish in it, unless it's a special kind of restaurant. Not every car that's produced is going to be identical to the one before. There's always going to be some kind of variations. And that's why thinking of it as an index is the exact correct way of doing it. Indices are ways of combining unlike things into a single measure. And so if you want some examples of indexes, there's the consumer price index, which is a way of combining prices on a whole bunch of different items, putting them together to tell you how much stuff costs. Gross domestic product is actually an index itself, because what it does is it combines a whole lot of unlike produced goods and services, combines them together to say, well, here's how much we actually made. And so index theory is a way of combining unlike items. And so in a sense, quantity isn't quite right, but it's still a quantity measure. Now, besides having this problem of combining together unlike items, you frequently have a choice of what index to use. There are many possible measures of combining output into a single item. Um, and so for example, um, you could have as your choices for measuring the output of something like um, uh, an electrical plant or the electricity that you're providing to an individual facility, you can go ahead and measure output in terms of something like kWh, uh, kilowatt hours, and that's great because it measures what you're actually collecting over the course of a month. You could also measure it in terms of kilowatts, which is the peak load that they have going around right there. Um, and each one of these two may actually help you in forecasting certain kinds of costs. Kilowatt hours would be great for getting it with fuel costs. KW would be great for the fixed costs that's associated with your facilities. And so you actually have the option of having many different kinds of indices available to you, and you have to pick and choose which one seems best. And there is a, it's commonly developed new indices in order to make it so that your cost functions are a little bit more accurate than they were before. And you're going to find out that choosing the right index brings you a long ways towards making it so that your cost estimates are better. And I'll show you how that works. Let's go ahead and give you two cost indices right here. So we'll call this volume index one, and we'll have this one as uh, volume index zero, and here's volume index one that's around over here. And both of them are going to be measuring the exact same uh, uh, month or week that we're going to have in a plant. So these costs are going to be all the same. But each of these output costs is going to be different from, it's going to be different because the output levels are going to be measured a little bit differently. So volume index zero right here, when we're measuring total cost, is kind of a weak relationship between the volume index and the total cost that you're actually observing. So you can see kind of a, a spread that's about there. You can say that on average, you know, that the total cost is going to be like that. But you can say that at any particular output level, like this, you have a significant amount of uncertainty about what you actually should be forecasting at the cost at that particular uh, in the, uh, volume index level. We can have another volume index over here. There's a much tighter relationship between the volume index and total cost. And so we can choose, again, an analogous level of the volume index. And we'll have much less uncertainty about what to specify as our guess about cost. And so we have two volume indices. This one has less uncertainty when trying to forecast what your total cost is. This has more. And this is what I mean in that your choice of volume index is one of the most critical choices you're going to make in trying to make your future cost estimates. Now, I'm not stating this as merely an abstract problem. Um, these kinds of choices evolve all the time. To give you an example, um, I used to do a little bit of work in trying to cost or price insurance. 
And I don't mean that I used to be an insurance agent, I meant that I used to do a little bit of transportation research. And so insurance companies may look and see if they're going to go into a specific zip code. And they go ahead and try to figure out, well, what would it cost to service the clients in this particular zip code? Now, they have a choice of volume indices that are there. The first volume index would come to mind would be, well, the number of people that we insure. Because as the number of people that we insure goes up, our cost to insure those people goes up. And also it works out to be that your revenue from insuring those people goes up. And so that would go ahead and give you kind of a noisy measure. Because the number of people that you're insuring alone does not go ahead and give you all the best information possible about what it's going to cost to insure them. People get into accidents. People get into accidents because they drive. And so Although the industry did go ahead and start off with a number of people, over to another measure, something which was a little bit more precise. And the first measure they moved into was something they called the vehicle miles traveled. And you can still see this used in a lot of transportation sources because the more you drive, the more likely you're getting into an accident because each mile provides you with an additional amount of risk. Now it's true, city miles are going to be a little bit different than country miles as far as the risk goes, but if you're dealing with one geographic area or one or various ones of similar type, you know that as people in the district drive more miles, they're going to have a greater cost associated with them. So there's an improvement that was made there on this other volume index, another one. Now, further improvements can be made on vehicle miles traveled by switching to yet another volume index, something along the lines of, say, power. Now, that means that you have greater costs associated with having a lot of people in the car because the cost of an accident isn't the vehicle, which you originally measured, but the people that are inside the vehicle because medical expenses will usually outweigh anything that has to do with uh, damage to the vehicle. So people are more expensive than the cars that are there. So again, whenever you're working on your cost estimates, keep in mind what you're using for your volume indices right there. Keep an eye out for a measure which is better than the one that you're using. A lot of old measures have hung around for a long time and they outlived their um, proper use. And a simple refinement of a new measure that is actually testable because you can see how well correlated these things are can make it so that your cost estimates are a lot more precise and you're a lot less likely to be wrong. It's just one of those hints I can give you as you're entering your job. You are going to make some cost estimates and it's best to start thinking about these very systemic ways of improving the cost estimates that you're making.